got a leak in the axle seal of my swing axle dune buggy. If you look back here, you'll see, you see that oil stripping down onto the rim and dripping off the tire? That means that the oil is leaking out of this axle tube from the transaxle. That means these seals are leaking. So they're gonna have to be replaced. First step is to remove the cotter pin and that big axle nut, it's a 36 millimeter, so that you can get the wheel and drum off. I loosened it with this big wrench. Now I'm gonna jack the wheel up high enough so that the oil that's in that tube will drain back into the transaxle and not come dumping out all over the place here. You can see this is jacked up high enough that that axle tube is actually leaning back towards the transaxle to drain that oil. With the axle nut off, now I can remove the wheel and brake drum. This is what it looks like with the wheel and brake drum removed. You can see I've got to take off these four bolts. You'll notice that although the seals are leaking, there's no oil on the brake shoes, there's no oil on the brake drum, except for the outer edge of it, and that's because the way the Germans designed this is there's a weep hole, I'll show it to you, but there's a weep hole on the other side. And when these seals start to allow oil past, it runs down into a little area that goes to a weep hole and it will run out the back of the drum. And so that's why you saw it dripping under the inside of the rim. And that's nice because it keeps these from getting oiled. It's a safety thing. If that leaked and got oil there, you wouldn't have any brakes in the back got the bolts out. Notice the orientation of this before I remove it. This goes up. It's got this little bump right here that goes up and it also has these little areas where it necks down right in here that are near the bottom. So that's the orientation of it. Now I'm going to remove that and I'll show you what's behind it. I've removed that cover and as you can see the cage on this ball bearing is bent and coming apart. And what caused the leak, if you look in, this is the inside of that casing. There's a piece of that cage that's wedged in and broke the seal. And that's what's causing it to leak. So I'm going to have to replace the bearing as well as the seals. When you have it jacked up like this, be sure and use a jack stand. And then I put wheel chocks on the opposite wheel over here you can see i've got a wheel i've got wheel chocks front and back on that wheel just to keep this from coming off of there you can see this bearing needs to be replaced because the keeper in it is broken up and the bearings are not evenly spaced around there to get it out uh, this is what i do i've got i just took a bolt and i ground down the sides and left this sticking out. And then what I can do is I can turn it in sideways and then turn it 90 degrees and it catches in there. I made two of those and then I have this puller that I can put a chain onto those. I could put the puller on the end of here and then just pull the bearing out. It turns out it comes out pretty easily. It just needs a way to pull it and there's not really a good way to grip it to get it out of there. This is what it looks like when it's all set up to pull them out. You can see, I'm going to try to focus in here. You can see each of those is turned 90 degrees so they catch inside the race of the bearing. And then on the end here is a puller. So I just turn on that nut shaped end and gently pull this out of there. I've got the bearing pulled out. It came out really easily. You can see that there's a rubber o-ring that was compressed inside of this spacer. See how this has a beveled edge? So this came off of there. There's also a little washer. You can see there's a washer on there that has that beveled edge and it fits over that o-ring. So that's part of the seal system. So you want to get that back together the same way. This is going to need some cleaning up. This is what the new bearing looks like. It goes on to here. And then I'm gonna gently fit it into that well where it goes. It's probably gonna take just a little bit of tapping to get it in there. On the back of the bearing, 
there's this spacer you can see it's got a chamfer on it too and it goes in and fits against the axle so when you put the bearing on that part has got to go on first it was a really tight fit so I warmed it up with a heat gun and it slid right on and into place okay now to disassemble the seals from here first of all you'll notice there's a gasket there's a single gasket on these transaxles the bus gasket uses two so they give you two but you only need one for this then you'll notice there's a large o-ring around the outside you can see part of that is starting to come apart right here that o-ring goes there and then you can see there's a seal in here and then there's this loose metal washer so all that needs to be taken apart and replaced with new parts to get the old seal out I'm going to put a socket on here and then just gently tap it out of there. Okay, I've got that pushed down. You can see when I take this off, there's this loose metal washer that's in there. And then this is what the seal looks like. So you know that the spring actually goes sticking up like this. The seal goes in forward this way. And so I've got new parts to replace all of these. You can see in the kit, they give you the seal, they give you the washer, they give you everything. This is the weep hole I was telling you about. It allows oil to come through there. You can clean this out. It comes out here, and I'll show you on the backing plate for the brakes. There's like a little funnel thing where it can come down and go out another weep hole out away from the brakes. I've got the weep hole cleaned out, so I can put in... Oh, they've got it smaller, so you don't have to put it in first. It fits through there. Okay. The old style is big enough it wouldn't come out. This is apparently the new style, in case you forget to put it in. See how this one won't go through. This is the old VW style. The new ones, I guess, are good enough to just put in from the other side, so I don't have to worry about putting it in now. But this is the new seal. You can see I just need to fit it into there. Okay, with it warm, I was able to tap the seal in there without damaging it. And I can tell because when you look on the other side, if you look in there, you want to be sure that the seal is made it all the way up against that shoulder all the way around. It's kind of blurry. Let me see if I can get it to focus. Yeah, down in there, you can see that shoulder, so it's it's against that all the way around, that means it's all the way in. To reassemble this, you're going to put this O-ring onto that shaft, and then you're going to put this spacer on with that chamfer facing toward the O-ring, and you can see that it will seal this joint along this shaft right here. The outside of this spacer is what that seal runs on, so it seals it there. And you also need a seal that goes around the outside of this bearing right here. And that's the large seal that you see right there that comes with the kit. So what I'm going to do is put a little bit of grease on them so that they slide on there and seal. Put the large one, the small one, and then put the spacer on. I've got that o-ring greased and on there now I can slide this you can see with the chamfer facing this way that's going to go on there you can see I've got that large o-ring it's greased and it's fitting over the outside of this problem is this backing plate has slipped down a little bit it's hard to see but that o-ring's in there so the next thing I'm going to do is grease up the inside of the lip of this seal and I'm going to fit this over there and put the gasket in place and then tighten it up okay I put a light coating of grease on there I've got the gasket in place you can see this hole in the gasket lines up with that weep hole and then this is the funnel like thing I was telling you about that if it drips into here it will run out and there's a corresponding weep hole on down in that bottom of that funnel that comes out the back of the backing plate. So now I'm ready to put this other seal plate on there. 
and tighten it down. Now I can put this new washer on. It's a little strange for me because I'm used to having to put it on ahead of time because it never fit through that hole. But that's on there now. Okay, those are snug. Next I'm gonna get a torque wrench and I'm gonna to torque them down to spec. These bolts take 43 foot-pounds, so I'm gonna to torque them to that level. Okay, those bolts are torqued. Got the drum cleaned up. It's time to put this wheel assembly back onto the axle and then put the castle nut on. I've got it snugged up on there, so I'm gonna lower the vehicle so the weight of it is on there and then I'm gonna to torque it. It takes 253 foot-pounds on that castle nut. I torqued it to 253, put the cotter pin in, separated it, and it's all done. 